Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the very first episode of Brains Applied. I'm your host Willem and today I'm going to answer the question how f***ed up is humanity or in short the Lucifer effect. The Lucifer effect was first described by Philip Zimbardo after conducting his notorious Stanford prison experiment. The Stanford prison experiment is quite famous, there even is a movie about it. The experiment was a simulation at Stanford University to study the development of norms and effects of roles, labels and social expectations in a simulated prison environment. Zimbardo and his assistants hired 18 seemingly normal students to play correctional officers and prisoners. Nine students played full-time prisoners while the other students were divided into groups of three to guard the prisoners in eight-hour shifts. The experiment was mentioned to last two weeks. However, on day two the prisoners started to riot and the situation escalated quickly. Eventually, five prisoners suffered from emotional breakdowns, some prison guards showed abusive behavior towards the prisoners and even used a fire extinguisher on the prisoners in an attempt to stop a riot. Now, if you've ever played GTA San Andreas, you will know that using a fire extinguisher on people is quite dangerous, like shooting them or beating them with a giant purple dildo. Eventually, the Stanford prison experiment was stopped after 6 days because Zimbardo's girlfriend and future wife was kinda mad about the way the experiment was conducted. I guess that guy really didn't want to sleep on the couch. After the experiment, Zimbardo started investigating the nature of evil and why individuals who normally act humanely can sometimes act otherwise in certain circumstances. He identified three factors that influence our human behavior the insight of individuals, the external influences of the situation and the broad influences of the system. He stated that any person can become evil in a certain situation, an effect that he named the Lucifer effect. FYI, Lucifer was one of God's angels who basically was an asshole and turned into Satan. As Zimbardo explained in a TED talk, there are seven social processes that have an influence on people in becoming evil. Number one, mindlessly taking the first steps. While doing evil things, people start with minor acts that increasingly become meaner and more violent. A good example is bullying. It might start with a simple push or an insult, but may end in very abusive behavior. Another great example is the Holocaust. Hitler didn't start the Holocaust all at once. It all started with discrimination, escalated towards violence like in the Kristallnacht and ended with a systematic extermination of Jews and other minorities. Number 2. De-individuation of participants or in simpler words, anonymity. By becoming anonymous, people don't have to worry about the opinions of others. A clear example are today's internet warriors. They can be rude, type in all caps lock and spread their horrible opinions, but in real life they might actually be rather nice. In ancient times, soldiers used war paint to transform themselves into strong and merciless warriors rather than regular kind farmers. What else do you thought it was for? Camouflage? The same can be said of the soldier outfits these days although these also serve the purpose of camouflage. During the Second Sino-Japanese War, good Japanese family men raped, tortured and murdered an estimated 300,000 Chinese citizens during what is known as the Nanjing Massacre. In the Stanford Prison Experiment, Zimbardo gave the COs the bad cop sunglasses and bats to become anonymous asshole cops. Using drugs also has an effect as it can prevent people from self-evaluating. Nazi soldiers actually used methamphetamines to increase their energy and reduce their sensitivity to pain and hunger. Number 3. Blind obedience to authority. Again an example from the Nazi regime. Adolf Eichmann was a German who was one of the main persons in the organization of the Holocaust. And this is what he said during his trial. You write to the foreign ministry that in light of the impending final solution of the Jewish question in Europe, emigration of Jews is to be prevented. 
I signed the document, but the text of the document did not come from me. That is understandable, because such texts were exchanged between the different departments all the time. Perhaps by chance you might remember, you signed orders for the hanging of Jews in public in the presence of other Jews. Why did you sign this? Because I had Himmler's orders. This was passed on in accordance with orders. I could not change anything if what Himmler ordered was passed on through official channels. There was nothing I could change on my own initiative. What did you mean when you signed that? I didn't sign it. I signed it under order. It was an order. You heard it right. This dude basically used I was following orders as an excuse for organizing the murder of millions. And he's the second most asshole Nazi there is between Hitler and PewDiePie. Number 4. Dehumanization of individuals. Earlier I was talking about how these inhumane activities start with discrimination and stigmatization of individuals. It correlates to this rule. By constantly stigmatizing others, you start to see them as worth less than you are. This also happens in racism. Instead of seeing people as they are, you see them as a pile of shit. People become a simple number, an animal. We are especially vulnerable to this when we don't know the others. Because of our prejudices. And everyone has those. I do too. Number 5 uncritical conformity to group norms. Humans are social creatures, this has advantages and disadvantages. We can do great things by cooperating, but we also want to be accepted by the group and we tend to think that the group has the right opinions. Back in the roaring 50s, a certain guy named Solomon Asch did an experiment. Participants had to compare the length of lines in group. Each participant on his turn had to state which line they thought was as long as the reference line. However, the participant didn't know that all other participants actually were actors. In the first rounds, all actors gave the correct answer. But after a while, all of them started giving the wrong answer. In the following clip, you can see how the experiment went. In the first test, the correct answer is to uh, one. 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 Two. One. Once again, the correct answer is two. Three. 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 In the end, 75% of the participants deliberately gave the wrong answer in at least one round. As later research showed, this rate goes up when the size of the group increases. So groups can have a large influence on individuals. I think you are able to think of an episode in history where this might have happened. Number 6. Diffusion of responsibility. Have you ever heard of the bystander effect? If you're getting a heart attack on the streets and it's crowded, you're less likely to get help than when it's quiet. This is because no one thinks it's specifically his responsibility to help you as there are others who can help you too. And like with Herr Eichmann, people will feel even less responsible when they are receiving orders from a superior. Due to this lack of responsibility, people ignore the cruelties that are happening and just move on with their life. Number 7. Passive tolerance through inaction. Not every person is equally evil. When evil happens, most people just stand there and they do nothing about the situation. In the Stanford prison experiment, most guards weren't very much participating in the abusive behavior, but they weren't preventing it either. Similarly, a Holocaust survivor mentioned in USA Today 
that not all Nazis were cruel psychos like we think they are today. But by not acting out, they allowed for the evil to happen. This is where real heroes stand out. They try to prevent evil from happening by all means necessary. These seven processes are what turned nine young students into asshole CEOs and what turned millions of men into a genocidal murder machine. Every single one of us can be evil. Or oh, like attorney Nicole Bergevin said after the Rwanda genocide, when you do murder trials, you realize that we are all susceptible. And you wouldn't even dream you would ever commit this act, but you come to understand that everyone is. It could happen to me, it could happen to my daughter, it could happen to you. Ladies and gentlemen, this was it, the very first episode of Brains Applied. If you want to know more about the Lucifer Effect, you can watch the Stanford Prison Experiment movie or read Zimbardo's book The Lucifer Effect. I will put the link to it in the description. Since you watched this video all the way to the end, I guess you liked it, so please press that sexy like button down below or subscribe to the channel and help me to become a YouTuber that can actually pay for his stock photos. And I'll see you next time. Arrivederci. 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 Arrivederci.